Thank you, Rob. I'm Bo Freeman, and I work for Person County Cooperative Extension Service. And we're here in Roxboro in the, on Morgan Street. Come on by and see us sometime. We're in the building that's a government building. It's 304, so come on by. We're located in between the superintendent's office and county administration office. So come up or give us a phone call or check us out on the web as we have both a website that's pretty good as well as Facebook. So we get people to call in several times. And one of the hot topics now is tomatoes. And people have tomatoes that are quote unquote, they, they bought some and, or they protected them real well and they got high tunnels, but they got tomatoes on the vine. But a lot of people have the same problems here in the mid season. And so that being said, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about tomatoes. And for those people on the internet, uh, or excuse me, cable TV, they'll be able to see this as well. But one that pops into mind real quick is cracks. And they're circular most of the time around the, the, the bloom or the, the attachment where you got the attachment to come into the plant and they just break. And a lot of people say, well, what's going on? What's going on? Da, 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 da. Well, most of the time cracks are due to, in splitting, are due to rapid growth. So hence, if you have not been watering your tomatoes during this wonderful drought, uh, you may want to consider it because if you the plant starts growing real rapidly whenever we do get some rain, because it's been sitting there and usually that rain will come and then all of a sudden we'll get some hot weather and the, it'll take off growing. And literally the the skin can't keep up with the inside and that's where you get your split. It's not a disease, it's not anything like that. But when you start talking about watering your tomatoes, this is where a lot of people don't understand. Watering is a lot. And what we suggest is one inch, one inch per week. And when you sit back there and go, what do you mean an inch a week? Well, sometimes you can need to put a cup out there and just measure when it gets to an inch, whether you're doing it with a, uh, any type of irrigation or if you've got drip irrigation or soaker hose, go down about an inch with your finger when you press it into the soil. Uh, it's a good indicator of how much moisture you got. And then do it the next week. And I hate to tell you this, but usually don't follow the forecast too much. Now, if it rains, it's a different story. But if it's forecasted for rain, I would go on and water just to have be on the safe side because, you know, they don't always hit it right. So we got cracks and, and splits on tomatoes. And some people will also get real rambunctious and they'll put on some more fertilizer. And this is one of those that once again, rapid growth. And also with tomatoes, if you get real rapid growth, especially with the ones you probably have now, majority of you, if you fertilize them now, you're going to do what they call, if, if unless it's a timed release fertilizer, you're going to blow the blossoms off because it's going to take off growing and it's going to be going out. And literally, you won't have any sets to have fruit. And that's very important. So remember, now you probably don't need to fertilize them except if it's a time release and I wouldn't do a whole lot on it either. Now you got some foliar feed type stuff that you can give it that may be a better option than the other. Also when you've got this stressed plant, uh, blossom end rot. The blossom end rot is on the other end of the plant where the bloom was and that's where you, you have a rotting uh, of it. And it's not real good. It's not real fun. So when you got blossom in rot, most of the time, it's a problem. Well, 
you've got a limiting factor in the plant. And a lot of times it's the calcium. And we always say, you know, put calcium down. But if your pH is off and you put the calcium down, that's wonderful. But if you don't put enough and the pH is still off, uh, it won't get absorbed. So make sure if you're going to do a soil test to find out the pH of the soil, as well as how much of the other stuff. We've got kits here in the office if you want to do one. We also have some probes, high demand, that you could borrow. I wouldn't do it right now. I'd wait until the rain comes, get the soil a little softer, and plug it. Now, and it's for free. Bring it back, and we'll ship it for you. Just got to do a little paperwork. That's all. So... It's, it's an opportunity for you to look at not only your garden, but if you have an azalea bed that you want to keep a different pH than what your yard is, then, you know, these types of things. It's an opportunity that's just waiting. It's free. So now sampling, different story. You need to get a representative sample of your area. So this means you have to take several plugs and the plugs need to be according to what you're going for, anywhere from three to six inches in depth. Then you put them in a bucket or some kind of container in a clean container and you mix it up and then you can put it into the box. And there's a little line that tells you how you need to fill up to. So, but that, that'll help you out with the blossom end rot quicker than almost anything. And as much drought as we've had right now the leaf probably are rolling up at the bottom we get some water it should be okay sort of a minimum type program problem so this is some of the things that can happen to a tomato and it, it moves pretty quick now the same thing can happen with stress on squash this time of year and so i would suggest that you Remove the squash if it looks diseased, and even your uh, tomatoes as well. Remove them from the area in which you've got your garden. And because it could be transmitting disease from one plant to another, it's simple to do, and you can move them out. So get rid of your damaged fruit, and you'll be pretty good. Now, when we start talking about nitrogen, I've already talked about in soil test, it will help you with the soil test if you don't understand the results that come back. It measures what's in the soil with the, your K and P. It'll give you an automatic figure for whatever you're growing for your nitrogen. It's pretty, but it'll also give you that wonderful pH. And that pH is critical. I can't go into that one near enough. Now, for those people who have pesticide license, we're going to be having some meetings coming up, and you can take advantage of it. And these meetings are going to be, the first one is on June the 10th, and this is open to anybody that has a pesticide license. The first class that we do on the 10th is going to be uh, for two recertification points for your pesticide license classes D. L, N, and X. Once again, D, L, N, and X pesticide license. And they will be at from 10 a.m. until 12 noon. You can do it both in person here at our office on Morgan Street, or you can zoom in if you want to. Give us a call or go check the website. I think we've got it up now. So an opportunity to get some points on your license because please check because a lot of them are going out of date come the 1st of July. So you may need to, to get you a couple of points in those categories. We also have another one that will be coming up on June the 14th. The 14th is going to be at 6 to 8 p.m. And it's going to be over in Granville because Johnny works two counties. And over there, it's going to be at the Extension Office in Oxford. 
And this one is more encompassing as far as the pesticide points. You'll still get two hours of credit, but it will be for classes A, B, D, G, H, I, L, K, M, N, O, T, and X. I'll go over that again. Categories on your pesticide license. You'll get recertification or you know, certification points of two hours for A, B, D, G, H, I, K, L, M, N, O, T, and X. So these are some of the classes that we'll be having, and we would love to have you come either here or there to work out what you'll be doing and learn more about pesticide and continue to be able to get some restricted use pesticides. Appreciate y'all coming and listening right now. We're going to take a quick break here, and Rob's going to take over and we will be returning and talking more about what the extension has been up to. Thank you. May is such a beautiful month. May has beautiful weather, full-time lawn, full-time garden season. It's the time to have fun and beautify. T.G. Brooks Company has plants, too, like tomato plants, all of the most popular local varieties. Pepper plants, cantaloupe, plenty of vegetable plants like tomatoes, cucumbers, squash, peppers, watermelon. They have your garden flowers like vinca, begonias, impatience, hanging baskets. And be sure to get Daddy Pete's Manure and Soil by the bag. It's very popular and really does the good job for you. Get your garden seed. They're fresh and ready for planting. Reseed your lawn with clean, fresh grass seed, and they have fertilizer and lime. And if you need mulch, they've got it. Even the triple ground mulch. Do you need straw or pine needles or potting soil, planting soil, or cow manure? They have spreaders. They have aerators for sale or rent. T.G. Brooks Company serves the homeowner and the commercial landscaper. T.G. Brooks handles everybody with the same courteous service, and they can arrange delivery. Or you can pull in with your pickup truck, your trailer. They'll load it up for you. They have bag products. They'll load those in your car or your van. Reminder, they have Bartlett Animal Feeds. It's so exciting here in May in full-time growing season. Be sure to st stop on out at 411 Helena Mariah Road in Timberlake. Phone them at 364-2428 if you've got questions. T.G. Brooks, proudly serving the homeowner, the farmer, and those in construction since way back in 1936. They welcome folks from all over Person County, Rougemont and Northern Durham, and of course, Southern Person County. Oh, glad we could get back here. This is Bo Freeman with Person County Cooperative Extension. And today we talked a little bit about tomatoes already. Well, now we're going to move forward with some of the 4-H stuff that'll be happening this summer. And Michelle, you may have already heard from her, but this is one of those that it's, it's worth repeating. And for those of you who are on the uh, spectrum, we've got some additional information that y'all may be what they able to watch. But we're going to be having our summer fun camps again that we have almost every year. So when we start talking about summer fun, we want to start first about, oh, COVID. Okay. Once again, we can have summer fun, but we're still going to try to make do with some of the COVID policies in that we don't want people to congregate in the same spot without a mask, that kind of thing. Now, our classes are different for different age groups. So what we talk about and say, it's all the way through, but we're going to have people uh, pass through the, the screening and wellness check in the morning, just like they have in school and other places. So we're going to have them come in. And once again, we're not going to be saying, have you been immunized or not, or da-da-da-da-da. We're going to be on the truth 
you know, let, let us know. But most of our activities, we're going to be spread out. So hence, we don't have to worry about the mask. But I'd, have, I'd bring one along just in case. And then once again, if you don't wear a mask, that's fine too. So please be, be cognizant of people uh, as well as the spreading out. And once again, we want you to wash your hands like you're supposed to. And also, if you've got, you know, if you can get back, if you want to get vaccinated. And it is nice that the health department is doing their wonderful work. And they finished up this week with a, a group of young people, but I dare say they'll be starting it up again. So more to come on that one. But uh, as far as summer fun goes, we've got a wide range of classes this summer that you can be involved in, and it's located on our website. Uh, but one of the things is just growing. And this one is where kids can learn a little bit on horticulture. They've got Johnny will be working with them a little bit, and they're going to be doing some doing fruits and vegetable plants. <clears throat> and working with them and it's a traditional based program and it's for ages eight and up and once again registration we actually let people do a lot of this online or you can come by and make sure that you do but you need to make sure that you're registered on uh, 4-h online uh, at version v2.4 h online.com and the Child must be registered first as a four in the 4-H system before they can be a part of our program. There's a one-time fee of $10 to register for summer fun. And once you've submitted the registration, you'll be it, you will have five days to submit it and pay the 10 bucks. Please remember that it's for young people. And we try to do age appropriate things. And the classes are capped. We want to make sure that we do a really good job there. And we want you to make sure that, you know, it's a, it's a good experience for everyone. And we want you to play good and them to play fair in the fa sandbox. So they'll be signing a code of conduct and disciplinary so that we can help out for the kids that want to make sure that they have a good learning experience. Uh, there's a walk through the woods that we're going to have as well. And that one is broken down into different age groups as whether it's clover bud or not. And this one's going to be up at Mayo. And so that's a great one. Uh, soil and water. Your, yours for life. And we're going to talk about the importance of soil and water. And let's keep it around and let's take care of it. And Nancy will be working with the Soil Conservation Service, will be working with that component or the district so that you'll learn more about what we can do. And then let's get cooking. We're going to have a cooking class, of course. And once again, when we do cooking, we do have Jennifer come in and she's going to be talking uh, through the regular base 4-H program and that's 8 through 12. And that was going to be at the end of June. Most of these classes are going to be running from 9 to 12. Explore farm animals. That one looks really good. And we're going to break it down into the clover buds as well as traditional base programming. And we're going to have it at the Hurdle Mills Park. So we'll be going down there. Uh, and then do you have what it takes to be a fire safety hero. So the fire marshal will be doing teaching that course on first time education for, for children. And it goes back to, we've got broken it down to one day it's gonna be clover buds, uh, ages five through seven. And then another day that it's gonna be a, the traditional based program eight and up. And we're gonna have it in another one of our parks. This program is one that we want to be talking about, that we, we're spreading people out and we're doing it right so that you can be more, learn more about it. And if you've got more questions, please give us a call at 336-599-1195. Once again, 
1195 or come by our office. Uh, we're there at 304 Morgan Street uh, in Rochester, and we'll be glad to talk with you about all these wonderful things. And we did talk a little bit about cooking class. Well, we've got a great big weekend coming up. And lots of people love to go outside and cook. And last week, Jennifer talked a lot about food safety. Well, I'm going to poke a little bit on food safety just to let you get a few reminders of the, the big things that you need to do, and especially if you're cooking outdoors. Once again, if we're cooking outdoors and we're especially a picnic or whatever, we want to keep our foodstuffs cool or cold. And the therm thermometer is your best friend. And that being said, first of all, coolers, pack them right. Don't put raw products, proteins, proteins uh, that means any type of meat and your soft drinks in the same cooler, unless you have a really good divider that can help keep things at, apart because it may start out frozen, but then it may thaw as it goes through the day and fluids accumulate and it never fails. It may be on the bottom of the can initially, and then somebody spills the can, the cooler. And what happens, you get the juices on top of the can, and that's where you don't want it to be. So when we have that problem, that's why we want to keep them segregated if we can, so you don't have that problem. So also, when you cook, Make sure you have enough utensils for the raw prep and the serving prep. Don't use the same ones unless you can wash and disinfect in between. That's very important because if you, if you pop that spatula out and you pick up that piece of meat and plop it on the grill or whatever you're cooking with, and then you pick it up with it and serve it on a plate, those germs are there. So disinfectant wipes can be your best friend. So have some of those, just clean it off so that it look, you know, once again, looks good, but also is good. Because bacteria sets around in a lot of places that we don't ever think about. If you've ever had one of those hand washing demonstrations, where they give you soap and that kind of, or little uh, glow worms, as we used to call them. And, and they can tell you whether you washed good or not. And it's scary. So, especially when, between times of when you get exposed to it versus when you wash. Not a bad idea. We got disinfectants now. Let's use them. We don't have to use it for COVID. We can use it for us. Let's say, keep those hands clean. Make sure when you're, I mean, we got the little gel jars. We got them all over the house. We got them everywhere. In the cars. Let's use them. We've, we bought these things. Let's use them up. So that's one of the big things, though, is food safety, is segregation of the raw proteins and your other food stuffs. Remember that outside, we got a little different uh, timetable. We want to eat products, especially the cooked products, within an hour because outside, traditionally, we're in a cooler setting or a hotter setting than indoors. So when we're outside, the microbes have a better time to, to, to regenerate and to recoup and to multiply. So it's not at two hours like on the, the dining room table. It's one hour when we're outside. And like I said, that lovely thermometer that you've got, put it into those meats. Find out whether you got to the critical point. And every meat is different, and I'm not going to go through that with you right now because you're going to forget. Most of these thermometers that you can buy, they got it labeled if you can get the right one. You can get them for little or nothing. In fact, they've got those instantaneous ones. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's a, sort of like, and then they got the ones in these smokers that they'll Bluetooth you, and you can sit back there and go, oh, this, the temperature is here on my meat. And remember, don't just check one spot. 
it's good to check the thickest spot in the in the uh, slice that you got, and just to make sure that that's the one that is going to be the problem child. Even though you still may cook one side a little bit too much, it's better than not enough. So these are just some of the cooking tips from a Memorial Day weekend that you can do. And remember, stay safe, stay, keep the work areas clean, and have fun. And remember the reason for the holiday. This is Bo Freeman, and I will be coming back a little bit later in today after we have this lovely commercial break, and we appreciate what you do for us, Rob. So thank you all again. Sandling Golf Cars and Trailers is located 613 Lewis Street in Oxford. Open for business weekdays 8 to 5, Saturdays 9 to 1. Call 1-800-221-9267 or 919-693-4626. Al, Hillary, and Will, there to serve you with all of your golf car needs. They have club car. Easy Go and Yamaha units. If you're wanting a gasoline or an electric golf car, they have them at Sandling Golf Cars and Trailers. Trojan batteries, parts, and repair service. Thinking about a new grill? Check out the Wilmington Grills at Sandling Golf Cars and Trailers. Speaking of trailers, they have utility, dump, enclosed, stock, and equipment trailers. That's Sandling Golf Cars and Trailers in Oxford, 919-693-4626, toll free, 1-800-221-9267. Sandling Golf Cars and Trailers. Well, I'm back. This is Bo Freeman with Person County Cooperative Extension Service here in Roxborough. We appreciate everybody listening in today and just want to sit back and say, we're having a good time, but we have some concerns. And some of these concerns happened a couple of weeks ago or a few weeks ago, I should say, um, when everybody was having gas shortages. And there were some people, not everybody, but some that went out and collected gas and brought it home in inappropriate gas containers. So hence, now we have some gasoline in our homes or still in the car that may be actually dissolving the containers that they're in. So I'm like going, let's be a little proactive here. So our first you know, instinct is, well, let's just pour it into the car or let's pour it into the lawnmower. Well, it may not be as easy as that. It's according to what kind of container you put it in. Now, once again, if it was the one that for gasoline, different story. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about what I say about it. Now, those that may be in water bottles or uh, gallon jugs or, or these type things, this may be a problem. One is, it is a, gasoline is a really good can, uh, solvent. So in other words, get rid of stuff, it breaks it down. You gotta remember, gasoline is a hazardous waste. There's a hazardous material that it would not use properly is a huge environmental impact. And we got to know that it's not just the fluid, it's also the vapor that can be our problems. And the vapors, it doesn't take much for you to smell gas. It's one of the more distinctive odors that we have. And once again, once you smell gas, where is it? Where's it coming from? That's our instinct, because that's a vapor. And traditionally, the vapors are very flammable. And they drift very quickly and very easily. So these containers that we have this gasoline in, we want to pour it into the, like I said, the lawnmower or the, or the car. 
Well, it has solubilized the plastics in which you were containing it in, probably. So I'm not saying in all cases, you may get away with it, but you might not. And I'm telling you that the might not, when you know, you've know you used all of it up, you may have gummed up your fuel system or your exhaust system, even worse. So you may not want to consider utilizing that gas for the, the first intention. So what do you do with it? Well, I spent a lot of this mo yesterday morning calling people. What do you do with this hazardous material? What do you do with this hazardous material? You're not going to like my answer because it's expensive. The best one that I've worked out is that you need to buy another container that can safely store gasoline and dispose of it into it. And this means just like you do in a filling station, you set it on the ground. You don't put it in the back end of the pickup truck. You set it on the ground. So it, it's grounded. So you have no uh electrical sparks possible and you fill it up and then you hold on to it because the recycling center here in person county is hopefully going to be having a hazardous waste disposal day we are excuse me for uh household waste uh, we'll be working with them with extension and so we're hopefully going to put it together with both pesticides as well as household waste and you can bring it there if we, and I think we, and I've already talked to the Department of Ag this morning. So we've got it somewhat set up. Uh, we don't have a date yet, but this is your best way of doing it. Now, the things that you really don't want to do, one is throw it out the window. It's going to break down. And whether you're going down the road and just want to get rid of it, you get a little water bottle, uh oh. You want to talk about environmental impact. You will kill not only the grass, but possibly the fish and, and all the invertebrates. And you basically sterilize the place. It's amazing how potent gasoline is. Then you got the people that say, hmm, I just want to pour it down the fence. Please don't do that. I implore you don't do that. This is one of those chemicals that you will pay for it for a long time. So don't go there. Uh, don't pour it in the ditch. It's just going to go down the road and whatever. Or you poured it out somewhere and then somebody comes by with a cigarette. Lo and behold, you've got a fire because the vapors are what catches on fire. Same type thing, you really don't want to use it to, to set bonfires or campfires or any of those types of things, because when you release it in the liquid form, it volatizes even on the way down. And so hence, you've got vapors around you already. And yes, you may have done it a thousand times, but that one time where that breeze puts it back into your face and you set these vapors on fire may not be a good opportunity for you. So please don't use it in, in starting fires because it could have mad, bad repercussions. Also don't use it in almost any type of, of setting. Uh, when you just pour it into the ground, you virtually sterilize the ground. And you may not realize it, but roots from adjoining plants go through there. And that means trees as well as bushes. And, and you may be pouring it here, but you may kill a tree over there just simply because you affected its groundwater. And that's literally what you're doing. And you need to screw up well. Not often, but it's possible because it is a petroleum product. So please, collect it, get rid of it, 
put it in a proper container, then we get rid of it. If you just let it sit around, like most things, problems just sit around, they get bigger and they can get worse. So please, let's try to take care of it the right way and we can do a better job. Now, when we talk about today, I'm moving on to the our weather. It's been sort of dry. It's been pretty dry. So that being said, it's not just affecting the yards or the gardens, but the farmers. They're having to irrigate tobacco to get them to, to live, literally. And Gary's been out doing some insect, insect traps, and he's been catching lots of bugs. Well, some of these bugs are going into their adult stages for worms, and they will be going through another life cycle. Hence, they will be la they're laying eggs now. They'll be hatching out, and then they're going to their larval state for the worms so hence he's gotten an enormous amount of moths for the cut worms and the bud worms so in about two weeks we may be getting a flush so those gardeners or farmers or whatever be on the lookout because you may get a little bit more than we had this this time last year also uh ponds we dried up, so we reduced the volume. So, and now we're getting a little warmer. In fact, earlier this week, it got real warm. And so the dissolved oxygen in the ponds are being depleted. So it wouldn't be surprising to see a few fish that didn't like the, the low rate of dissolved oxygen so you may want to think about that and aerating some of these garden ponds if you've got those. Uh, now, if you got a deep lake, a little bit better. Yeah, but if it's shallow uh, and you lost a lot of that surface water, you remember the, the most volume of water you have is on the very top, and then it decreases as you go down. So therefore, the amount of dissolved oxygen that's in there in the water for the fish will be reduced dramatically. So just be thinking about that. And while we're talking about water, drink, drink water. Lots of times, one of the big problems that we have in our lives is that we don't intake enough fluids. Water is the number one fluid that we need to intake. Because as I grew up and we were on the football field and we had gator, I go was one of the first ones to have Gatorade. Uh, coach would go through Gatorade and, and he was like, oh, this stuff's great. And finally one by one boy said, but he said, can we just have water? So coach went out one day and said, we're going, you know, do you want orange juice, grape juice, punch juice? And then we had nature juice. The nature juice is just water with ice. It's wonderful. Now, once again, don't be sitting around taking in empty calories with these other fluids. So a lot of times we just empty calories, you know, pops and all the other types of drinks that we do. A lot of times it's just calories and we're hot and we drink. And we want to keep high, you know, hydrate. And we're just taking in excess calories. So think about that. Or just plop in a, a little bit of fruit in your water or something like that. Just give it a little flavor if you get tired, just water, which is okay. Not unusual. So please keep hydrated on this Memorial Day weekend. Hopefully, we'll get some rain. And remember that if we get a lot of rain and everything starts growing out of, out of control, some of your fruits may burst. Some of our crops will grow dramatically and the bugs are coming. So be prepared, watch, but have fun. And remember, we may not be in the garden as much as we were last year. So 
make it a point to go out there this year because now we can socialize with more people outside the home. Let's not forget our gardens and let the weeds take over in the insects. So final thoughts for the gardening corner. Hope you have a great Memorial Day weekend, and we will talk with you later. Thank you. This has been Bo Freeman with Person County Extension. Thanks. Bye.